you're trapped within the depths of hell and you're running out of options to escape. However, the giant defending your cage seems to be struggling with his math homework. You shout to try and help him with it, and after some thinking, the giant gives you the question in exchange for your freedom. He shows you two vectors like this, and asks you to find a third vector that will be perpendicular to both vectors at the same time. You think and think and think, but nothing comes up, it just seems impossible. But then suddenly, an angel descends and tells you to think of the magical D word. No no no, not, not there, not there. Depth. Suddenly, two vectors appear out of nowhere. Both are perpendicular to both vectors. All you had to do was expand your horizons and look into the 3D realm. The giant, satisfied, lets you out and the angel pulls you to the upper realm and drops you off in the overworld. But before he goes away and goes up to the heavens, he gives you one last tool to find those vectors again. The cross product. So first, what is cross product? Well, as we heard just now, the cross product can find the vector perpendicular to two vectors at once. Now as you saw with the giant problem, this is not possible in a 2D plane. And it's important to note that cross products only really work in 3D. However, in the 3D plane, if you have any two vectors, there will always be two or more vectors perpendicular to it. The perpendicular trait is not the only thing about cross products though, and in other videos we'll go over what other things cross product can find. For now however, let's learn the two formulas to calculate cross products. If we assume vector A and vector B to be 3D vectors, the two formulas to find cross product are A cross B, and for the magnitude of cross product, the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times sine theta. Now that theta is the angle between the two vectors. Now starting with A cross B, this is by far the most important thing about cross products that you want to learn. So let's see how you solve for it. Now to find the cross product, you'll be utilizing something called a matrix. For an example, let's say that vector A and vector B start at the origin, with vector A reaching out to the point 1, 2, 4, and vector B reaching out to the point 2, 1, 3. Now from here we want to find the cross product. Now it's super super important to note that cross products have a major difference from dot products. They are not commutative. Meaning that the order that you put vector A and vector B in definitely does matter in this case. So for this example, let's just say vector A goes first. Now let's enter the matrix. To set up the matrix for this, draw two lines on the left and right tall enough to put a 3x3 three three grid of numbers in it. Now on the top row, put the letters i, j, and k. These are your x, y, z coordinates, just in unit vector notation. Now in the middle row, put your first vector, or for us vector a, so the numbers 1, 2, and 4 lined up with i, j, k. Now for the last row, can you guess what it is? It's the second vector, vector b. So the numbers 2, 1, and 3 go on the bottom. Now, we start calculations. You're going to calculate them each letter at a time. So let's start with i. To calculate for i, ignore the column with i and cross the other two columns. You do it like this. Top left times the bottom right subtracted by top right times the bottom left. That's why it's called crossing because it kind of makes an x formation. So for our example, we ignore the i column, the very leftmost one and we do 2 times 3 minus 4 times 1. This equals 2, so we just get 2i. That is our x direction unit vector. Now do the same thing with j. Ignore the column with j and do the same crossing motion. 1 times 3 minus 4 times 2. That equals negative 5. Now j or the y coordinate is a special letter in that it will always be negative. It will go i is positive, j is negative, k is positive. So since j is always negative, it will be negative negative 5j, which is just 5j. Now for k, do the exact same thing. Ignore the k column and the exact same x motion. 1 times 1 minus 2 times 2. That equals negative 3. Now k is positive, so we just keep the negative 3, and we have negative 3k. What's our final vector? 2i plus 5j minus 3k. 
Okay, now let's leave this place. Alright, so now you can find the cross product of any two vectors. By far the hardest part about this process is just watching the signs and making sure that all your negatives and positives are consistent, so just keep an eye out for that. Also, remember that J is negative and I and K are positive. Now for the second equation, this is the magnitude of vector A times the magnitude of vector B times sine theta, and theta equals the angle between the two vectors. An important distinction between the two equations is that this equation finds the magnitude of the cross product. So you won't get something like the ijk form like last time, you'll just get a low number that tells you how long the cross product is. Now if we couple this with the previous equation and make them equal to each other, but remember doing that means that we have to do the magnitude of a cross b, we can actually solve for theta. This is a common question that shows up on tests, so let's do it. Let's say that we want to find the angle between the two vectors from last time, 1, 2, 4, and 2, 1, 3. To start, we have to find the magnitude of vector A and vector B. All you have to do is plug it into the familiar Pythagoras theorem you've done so many times. Don't worry, this actually does work for three coordinate systems as well. So we get the square root of 21 and the square root of 14. Now going back to the equation, it's clear that our next step is to find this magnitude of A cross B. We actually already have the cross product from our last question. All we have to do is plug in the same thing into the Pythagoras theorem. So we have the square root of 2 squared plus 5 squared plus negative 3 squared. That gives us the square root of 38. Now the only unknown left is sine theta, so we can just solve for that. So the equation we start with to find sine theta is the square root of 38 equals the square root of 21 times the square root of 14 times sine theta. Divide both sides by the square root of 21 and 14 to get this equation. Then find the inverse sine of the square root of 38 divided by 21 times 14 and we get a final answer of 21.07 degrees. Not too bad. Now the last topic we'll go over is cross products on a visual base. Let's dig all the way back down to hell and visit our giant one more time. His math problem had two vectors. A and B, just like this, and we had the two vectors that were perpendicular to both A and B. But the question is which one is the cross product? Well, if a test asks you graphically, that is with no specific numbers, you can use the right hand rule to quickly figure it out. To use the right hand rule, first figure out which vector is first and second. In our case A is first and B is second. Now point your thumb in the vector A's direction and the index in the vector B direction. Now point your middle finger outward like you're trying to flip someone off or just in a perpendicular direction. Wherever that middle finger points, that is the cross product's direction. So if we use it on this graph, it's clear that the cross product is this vector. Now this is also the reason why the order matters so much in cross products. If we switch vectors a and b and use the right hand rule once again. Now the cross product points the other way and the answer is completely different. Alright now it's getting way too hot in here, let's dig back up. So yeah that's about all there is to it. Cross products are extremely important especially in physics and learning about them will help you immensely in the long run. That being said, I haven't even scratched the surface about the applications of cross product. So I hope I see you again in the next video where I cover that. Until then, continue diving into Matrix and best of luck with your studies and bye bye.